Okay, all right. Just want to make sure. Of course, all we do. Okay. Um, we have Chet Dalit. Yeah. A person may declare Cherem part of his flock or his cattle, some of his male and some female Canaanite slaves, slaves or part of his ancestral land, but if he declared all of them to be Cherem, they do not become Cherem. These are the words of Reb Elazar. Reb Elazar ben Azari said, if one may not declare all his property Kerem to the Most High, how much more so must a person spare his property? If someone declares Kerem as uh, his son or daughter, his Hebrew man, slave, or maid servant, and he acquired land, they do not become Kerem because the person cannot render Kerem something that is not his. Kohanim and Levium do not declare a Kerem. These are the words of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says Kohanim cannot declare a Kerem because the uh, Karamim belong to them. However, Levium can declare a Kerem because the Karam. Karamim do not belong to them. Rabbi, Rabbi says the view of Yehuda Rabbi Huda is indicated with respect to real property, as it says, for it is an eternal holding for them. And the review of Rabbi Shimon with respect to movable property, inasmuch as the Karamim did not belong to them, did belong to them. The Karamim dedicated to the Kohanim are not redeemable, but they are given to the Kohanim. Rabbi Yehuda ben Zesera says unspecified Karamim are for the repairs of the temple, as it says, any Karam is most holy to Hashem. But the comments say unspecified karamim are for the Kohanim, as it says, like the karam field, his ancestral holding shall go to the Kohan. If so, why does it say any karam is most holy to Hashem? To teach that it takes effect for uh, Kadoshi, uh, Kadoshi, Kadoshim, and Kadoshim Kela. Okay. Um, continuing, Makrim Adam is Kodesh. So we were wondering to ourselves, how is a person able to be Makrim something that's uh, that's that's Kodeshim? Okay, we understand if it's if it's like a shlamim, a lekotchim kalim, then he can okay, he can give the meat to the coin. But how the heck did the Israel come into possession of uh, of the meat of a chattas, for example, which is kotche uh, kotchim, or an ola, which gets entirely burned on the mizbech? How, how does it help to be machrim? Okay, ben, so it says ben kotche kotchim, ben kotchim kalim. Im im neder no sein is So now what what happens if let's say he made a neder that he was going to bring um, an ola? So he said, Hare Alai Ola. That's a neder. Okay, he said, I'm going to bring an Ola. So if he now designates an Ola, and then he says, Okay, I'm Makrim this Ola, and it belongs to the coin, and then you say, Okay, well, now you have to pay the Achrayut. So now, if you, if you, because you, the coin can't actually take the animal now that it's been designated for the Old Mizbeach, but since he has been Makrim it, he, he have to, he have to say, Okay, he has to lose the value of it. And that value is the entire value of the animal because he has a personal Achrayus on it. If the anim animal had to drop dead right now, he would have to replace it and bring a new Ola. Okay, because he said, Hare Alai. Im Nadava, but however, if he if it was just a Nadava, where he said, Hare Zor, if he just pointed to this animal and said, this is an Ola, didn't put, put a personal apparatus on it. If the animal had to die, he wouldn't have to replace it. Okay, so now, what, what does it mean if he's now Machim, this animal? He has to give something to a Kohen, but what? And the answer is, is the right to bring an Ola. Okay, no sin is tova. So, how much if you if you went to to somebody and said, "Listen, I'm providing." If you went to a group of people and said, "I'm providing the uh, the animal," who wants the right to bring an ola with this animal? And everyone looks around and says, "Yeah, I'd love to bring an ola for free." Okay, so now, if, how much would a person pay if they are if they're bidding each uh, against each other and say, "Look, I want to bring it. I'd pay you ten shekels to bring. I'd bring it. I'd give you twenty shekels for the right to bring this ola." And whatever that we, we assess, what's the value of the of the schus of bringing an ola, and that is what he has to give to the coin. Okay, shor ze ola omrim kama adam rotzeli ten b'shor ze lhalos ola she'en or rashai. Okay, so that's um, that's what I just explained to you. That if you look, if he said that this it is a particular. Uh, this particular animal, you say, who would, how much would a person pay for the right to to bring this animal as an ola? Okay. Bechor. Now, what happens if he has a if he has a bechor? Israel, if if Israel has bechor, he has to give it to the coin anyway. Now, if he's machrim, once again, it's going to have to be talking about the value, and what value are you going to give? Bein tamim, bein balmum. Whether it's a, whether it's um, a whole bechor or a balmum, okay. Machrim or so you can you can make a cherem out of it. Ketzat podin or so. Well, how do you how do you redeem it? How do you know what the what the correct value is? Um, how much would a person give for the right to give this Bechor to the Kohen of his choice, right? Either to his to his grandson, the Kohen, or to his nephew, the Kohen. Rabbi Shmuel Omer, 
כסוב אחד אומר, תקדיש, וכסוב אחר אומר, אל תקדיש. So Rabbi Ishmael is coming and doing a drash over here. So the two apparently contradictory psukim, where it talks about um, about the bechor that you that you that you may be makdish, and the other one says that others you may not be, be makdish. Okay, it says how do we how do we understand this? If shalom al takdish shikvar nimar al takdish, if shalom al takdish shikvar nimar takdish. You have two you have two verses that contradict each other. One says yes, one says no. Emor meat makdish or ata hikdish. Iloi ein ata makdish or hikdish mizbeach. You can. Make a, make a, sanctify it in terms of its value, but you cannot sanctify it in terms of the Mizbayach. Okay, and that's and that's how Rabbi Shmuel explains this the situation of the Kodshe Kodshim. How is it that you can be Makdish or Machrim, um, any kind of uh, any kind of um, uh, 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 thing that uh, that cannot go on the Mizbayach? And he says it's just a monetary thing; it's not going onto the Mizbayach. Okay. Okay, so now we're back to the times when the Yovel is in effect. And a person sells his field. Okay, this is now an ancestral thing. Now normally this would uh, normally this would uh, would return to him in the Yovel. Okay, and uh, but he has the automatic right to redeem it, less the pro rata value of how much it's worth, uh, how much he sold it for. Um, so if he if he let's let's take round numbers if he sold it ten years before the Yovel, so we've got ten years of of usage coming out of this field. It may be a little more complicated because we because Shmita years aren't actually counted. Um, but let's just let's just use round numbers for now and ignore the effect of Shmita. Um, so if he was Makdish it ten years in, for uh, it's not Makdish he sold it he sold it ten years into a buyer for a hundred thousand shekels, and now. Five years later, he wants to redeem it. He can automatically go back to the buyer and say, "Here's fifty thousand shekels. Please get off my property." He's allowed to do that, okay? But, but he, he, can't... he doesn't give back the whole amount that that, that five hundred thousand doesn't get that back. He has to give back that amount or any amount. No, he has to give back a pro rata. If he if he sold it for ten years, then after five years, he, he has to pay half of it. Oh, okay, all right. So it's exactly pro rata of whatever whatever he he received for it. He has to give back pro rata. Okay. Uh, okay. But but you cannot but you cannot do it within within two years. Like if you sold the field, you can't come back the next year and gazam the buyer and say, okay, he has nine hundred thousand, ninety thousand, give, give him back my field. He's got to give the the buyer at least two years on it. Uh, it, it, it it's it, it's written in the plural, so we see it's a it's a gazeris a that he has to give the buyer at least two years on on the field before he can before he can redeem it. If it was a year of blight or uh, um, uh, or, or, or disease or shvir, so even if it was a shmita year when you can't get the benefit of the field, aina or la milo min hamenyan, it does not count um, as a as one of the as one of the years as one of the two years. It's got to be two years of actual usage of the field. Nara, if the buyer left it, uh, um, he left it un, uh, unsown. Or Hovira, or he didn't even plow it. Or La Alomina Minyan, that's the buyer's fault. He had he had the rights to use it. There was nothing preventing him except his own laziness or whatever circumstances befell him that he that he failed to use the field. But that still counts as a year um, towards when the the seller can come and uh, and redeem it. So he says, if he, if the seller happened to sell it just before Rosh Hashanah, when there's still fruit on the tree, then the buyer gets the benefit of three years of fruit, because uh, because the seller fails to remove the fruit from the field and he uh, and he can't redeem it for another two years. Okay. All right. It carries on. If he sold it to to the first guy. Okay, let's say he sells it to Ruvain for uh, for a hundred dinars. And and Ruvain then sees an opportunity for a bit of profit, and he sells it on to Shimon for two hundred. So now the original owner comes and wants to and wants to get the field back from Shimon. Okay. He only has to do the, the calculation according to what Ruvain initially paid him, right? The hundred. Right. Okay. So he so he he can go to Shimon and say, okay, well, um, it's been uh, it, there were ten years to go. 
and two years are down. So here you go, 80, 80 dinars. And he says, but, 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 but I paid 200 for this. And he said, that's, that's not my problem. I, I, I sold it for 100 and, it's, uh, and I'm entitled to redeem it for, for 80 now. Okay. Because the Pasuk says to the person who, uh, who, 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 to whom he sold it. What happens if it's a reverse situation? He sold it to Ruvain for 200. Okay. And Ruvain was having trouble farming it. He couldn't do it properly. And Shimon said, listen, I'll take it from you, but I want it for 100. Okay. So, so, so Ruvain takes the loss. And uh, now the, the, the original owner wants to come and redeem it. He can go to Shimon and say, okay, you paid 100 for it. I'll, here you go. He has 80 as, as your pro rata. And, uh, and Shimon, Shimon, Shimon can't say to him, but you, but you sold it for 200. You must give me, you must give me 160. No. Nope. Looking specifically at the word laish, you must give it to the person that's in the field. So it always benefits the original owner. Okay. Lo yimko berachot biyig ol bekarov. Now, there are, this, there are some stringencies that we have with the person who wants to redeem a field that he sold, as, which do not apply, as we'll see, to, the, to somebody who was maktish a field, to the, to the temple. Okay? Um, so the first stringency is that a person may not sell one of his other fields in order to redeem, uh, redeem this one. Okay? Whether it's a, uh, um, he, he might want to do it because uh, because he, he's selling a field that's far away, so he can redeem a, a field that's closer to his house, or Baravi that he wants to sell a bad field in order to redeem a good field. Okay, so, um, so it's not uh, it's, it's, we don't we don't want the person to start like sort of making his fields liquid and and, and trying to and trying to shuffle them around in order to you you're gazumping a person you're taking him off a field that he bought, so you can't do that by putting somebody else in that position and sell you know selling another field to somebody else so that you can do that to him a little bit later you're messing people around that's not uh, that's not fair, okay a low yield with the eagle and he can't borrow money to do it either he has to have cash in hand, in order to in order to redeem his field. Okay. And he cannot do it piecemeal. He can't say, okay, I'll take half the field. He has half the money. Either all or nothing. Okay. These are all things that apply to a field that he sold. But when it comes to hektesh, if he was Makdish's field, all of the above is permitted. He's allowed to sell. He's allowed to borrow. He's allowed to do it, in, uh, do it piecemeal in order to redeem his field. Okay. And this is the stringency of... Uh, of of regular of regular deals versus hektesh deals, um, and the reason is because in when the yovel comes, what's going to happen to the field? Right when if he sold it, then the field comes back to him. If he was makdish it and it wasn't redeemed, bye bye field forever. So therefore, we have this leniency with the hektesh that we allow him to do whatever shtick he wants to in order to redeem his field, so it shouldn't be lost from his ancestral property. Okay. Uh, Let's go, Chazara's Dalit Gimel. But with sacrificial offerings, it is not so. Even if his father died and left him 10,000 zoos or his ship was at sea, and they came with tens of thousands, the temple treasury has no claim on them. The age uh, category depends upon the subject of the vow. How so? A young man who vowed the Eric of an old man gives the Eric of an old man. And an, of, uh, and an old man who vowed the Eric of a young man gives the Eric of a young man. The Arakam depends on the subject of the Eric. How so? A man who vowed the Eric of a woman gives the Eric of a woman. And a woman who gives out the Eric of a man gives the Eric of a man. The Eric depends upon the time of the Eric. How so? If he vowed someone's Eric when he was less than five years, Five years of age, and he then became older than five, or less than twenty years of age, and then became older than twenty. He gives according to the time of the Eric. The thirtieth day is judges below this age. The fiftieth and the twentieth year are judged below the lowest age, as it is said. And from sixty years of age and up, if, it, if a male derive all of them from the from the sixtieth year, just as the sixtieth year be ju is judged as below this age. So too, the fifth year and the twentieth year are judged as below this age, and it is indeed so. The scripture made the 60th year is below it uh, to be stringent. So now we then make the 50th and the 20th year is below it to be lenient. It teaches us that if that 
teach us it is said years years for Gezer Sheva, just as the years mentioned in regard to the 60th year are judges below it, so too the years mentioned in regard to the 50th year and the 20th year are judged as below it. Whether it be lenient or be stringent, like Elazar says, until they're over the years by one month and one day. If one says, I take upon myself to give my weight, he gives his weight. If he specified silver, he's required to give silver. If he specified gold, he's required to give gold. There was an incident concerning the mother of Yamatira who said, I take upon myself to give my daughter's weight, and she went up to Jerusalem and weighed her, and she gave her weight in gold. It was one says, I take upon myself to give the weight of my arm. The movie head says, he fills a flask with water and inserts his arm up to his elbow, and many things with donkey meat, sinews, and bones. If he adds it up to uh, until it fills up, and he adds it up, and he adds it up until until it fills up. The Yoshi says, now how is it possible to determine the price uh, precisely flesh against flesh and bones against bones? Rather, oh, no. uh, I skip. Oh, just a second. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. I'm, 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 carry on, carry on. Just finish this mission. By the way, we estimate how much the arm is likely to weigh. Hey, that's three. That's no, that's two. If one says, I take upon myself to give the value of my arm and we value it. No, no, that's it. We've uh, we've done three mission. Okay. All right. Okay, now before us. Okay. If one who buys the fetus of a donkey belonging to a non-Jew or sells one to him, even though it's not permissible, or he enters into a partnership with him or receives a donkey from him to hold or gives one to him to hold, is exempt from the Bachel law, as it's stated in Israel, but not in uh, others. The donkeys of Kohanim and Levium are exempt because they were Kalvachoma. If they exempted the original of the desert, it only is proper they should exempt them, they exempt their own. If a cow bought something but without me a donkey, or a donkey bought something where then we a horse that is exempt from Bahua laws. Because the state it states that the firstborn of a donkey, the firstborn of a donkey twice, until the bearer is a donkey and the offspring is a donkey. What is their status in regard to eating? If a kosher animal bought something resembling an ocean un unkosher animal, it's permissible for eating. If an unkosher animal, animal bought something resembling a kosher animal, it's forbidden for eating. But whatever comes out of something unkosher is unkosher. Whatever comes out of something kosher is kosher. It is an un unkosher. Uh, I'm sorry. It is, if an unkosher fish follow a kosher fish, kosher fish is permissible for eating. But if a kosher fish follow a whole unkosher fish, it's prohibited for eating because this is not its growth. If a donkey which had not yet given birth would bear two more two males, he must give one lamb to a kohen. If if it bore a male and female, he gave, must give say, one lamb for himself. If two donkeys which are not yet given birth bore two males, he must give two lambs to a Kohen. If they bore a male and a female, or two males and a female, he must give one lamb to a Kohen. If two male fails and a female and a cattle, or two uh, males and two females, there is nothing for him from him for a Kohen. If a donkey which had previously given birth, which the ones are not given birth, or two males, he must be given one lamb a Kohen. And if they bore a male and a female, he must turn aside one for himself. Okay. Sorry, just a second. Which which mission are you on? I'm on Dalit. No, okay. So that that went too far. Sorry, we, we I, I lost focus and uh, we just finished Gimel, so that's it. Okay, and now we get to finish Horaios. A man takes precedence over a woman in matters pertaining to life and pertaining to a lost article. A woman takes precedence over a man in matters pertaining to clothing. Um, clothing and releasing her from captivity. However, if they both stand to be molested, a man has precedence over a woman. A Kohen takes precedence over a Levi, and a Levi takes precedence over Yisrael. A Yisrael takes precedence over a Mamser, and a Mamser takes precedence over a Nisanite. A Nisanite takes precedence over a convert, and a convert takes precedence over freed slaves. When is this? When they are all equal. When the Mamser is a Torah scholar and the Kohen is ignorant, the Mamser was a Torah scholar takes precedence over the Kohen Gadol, who was, who, who, who was ignorant. Okay, and one Mishnah from Zavachim. All sacrifices which have been slaughtered for designation other than their own are valid, but they are not credited, credited to the owner as fulfillment of his obligation, except for the Pesach and Katas offerings. The Pesach offering in its proper time, the Katas offering at all times. 
So Eliezer says also that Ashim offerings, the Pesach offerings at the proper time, and the Katas and Ashim offerings at all times. So Eliezer says the Katas offering comes to atone for sin, and the Ashim comes to atone for sin. Just as the Katas offering is qualified if it is intended for designation other than its own, so too the Ashim um, offering is qualified if it is intended for a designated offer uh, other than its own. Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay, then, Kiddushin. Uh, good. If one patrols with shumos, with tithes, with gifts, and the ward of the purification, or with the ashes of the purification, she is betrothed, even, uh, and even a non kohen If one says to another, go and betroth so and so to me, and he went be and betrothed her to himself, he, she is betrothed. Similarly, if one says to a woman, you are betrothed to me after 30 days, and another came and betrothed her within 30 days, she is betrothed to the second. A second non kohen and a, to a kohen are the daughters of a kohen, or the non kohen, the non truma. If one says to a woman, "You are betrothed to me," on condition that I will give you two hundred zuz, she is betrothed, and he gives it, and he gives it. On condition that I will give it to you from now until thirty days, if he gave it to her within thirty days, she is betrothed. If not, she is not betrothed. If he says, "On condition that I have two hundred zuz," she is betrothed, provided he has he um he has it. On condition that I will show you two hundred zuz, she is betrothed, provided he shows it to her. If he showed it to her on the table, she is not patrolled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shabbos. Shabbos. We may neither stuff a camel nor cram it, uh, but we may put food into its mouth. We may not fatten calves, but we may put food into their mouths. We may put food into the mouths of fowls, and we may put water into a brand, but we are not needed. We may not place water before bees or before doves that are in total in a dove coat, but we may place water before chicken geese and chickens and before our rodian doves. We may cut up gourds before cattle or a carcass before dogs. We may we have Yehuda says if it was not yet a carcass prior to the Sabbath, it is probably permitted, prohibited, since it is not something that was prepared. We may in all vows on Sabbath, and we may seek a release from vows for things that are necessary for the Shabbos. We may step up stop up a woman, we may measure a patch or a mikvah. An incident occurred in the days of Tadak's father and the days of Abishol ben Bat Batnis, but they stopped and stopped up a window with an earthenware jug and and, and tied a cup with a brush of action tools. Similarly, a rather whether a vat had an aperture of a handbreadth or not, and from their words they would learn that we may stop up, measure, um, and tie uh, on the Sabbath. Tomorrow is uh, is our Erevin. Okay. Uh, 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 if, if, a, if, a, if a Islamic person went down to immerse himself, but there is doubt whether he immersed himself or he did not immerse himself, or alternatively, even if he def definitely um, did immerse himself, there is a doubt whether there was a 40 saw of water or not. And alternatively, there were two mikvos, one containing 40 saw and the other not. He immersed himself in, in himself in one of them, but does not know in which one. The doubtful case of the judge Tommy. If a mikvah was measured and found lacking all richly poor foods that were prepared on its basis, heretofore, whether in a private domain or a public domain, or tummy, in regard to what these words said, only in a case of severe tumor. But in a case of mild tumor, for instance, one who ate tumor, tummy foods, drank tummy liquids, or one whose head and greater part of his body entered into drawing water, or three liters of drawing water all over his head and greater part of his body, if he went down to immerse himself, but there is doubt whether he immersed himself or did not immerse himself, or alternatively, even if he did immerse himself, uh, there is doubt whether there were 40 saw of water or not. And alternatively, there were two mikvos, one containing 40 and the other not. He had, and he had immersed himself in one of them, but there's not which one. There's, if there's, um, there was doubtful cases of a judge Tahoe. But uh, Rabbi Yossi declares in Tommy, and Rabbi Yossi says, anything that has, has been zaka of tuma is, a, is forever in a disqualified state until it is known that it becomes Tahoe. However, in doubtful cases, whether he becomes Tommy and whether he causes Huma or Judge Tahoe. And Gimel, these are the cases of doubt pertaining to drawing water that the sages declare Tahoe. There is doubt whether it fell into the mikra or did not fall, or alternatively, if it definitely did fall, but there is doubt whether it was, um, uh, there was 40, 40, 40 saw, uh, saw in the mikra or whether there was not, or uh, alternatively, there were three, two mikras, one containing 40, one quality, and the other. And and not and the other not and it fell into one of them, but he doesn't know which one. Uh these are doubtful cases of Judge Tahor, because there is something on which it depends. But if they quote contain well, less than 40 short saw and fell into one of them, and he does not know which one fell in, 
and when, when it fell, this doubtful case uh, is Judge Tommy because there's nothing to depend on. Okay. okay. And that's it, and I'm going to run. Okay. Have a great day. Okay. All right, so why do you think we'll be post uh, tomorrow? Tomorrow, there's only one minion. It's the long one. Right, so I have no long. idea what time it's going to be finished because, like, after Slichos, uh, long, super long Slichos, and Hataris Nadarium and whatever. So I'll just have to be in touch with you when we when we finish. Call me. I, I text. I won't hear. So just call. You know. Okay. Great. Bye. Thank you.